Hello there, today we're going to solve question number 2 of May June 2023, paper 2-1. In the previous video we did question number 1, so please go back to that if you wish to watch question number 1. Sala is a sole trader who sells on credit. Her, she maintains a provision for doubtful debts at 4% of receivables. Okay, she has uh, these receivables at the beginning of the year, at the end of the year, fine. End of the previous year means beginning of this year. You should know that. It's same as Jan 1st, okay? So these are the rece receivable balances. So remember, sometimes you might have to deduct any irrecoverable debts. So they may mention, oh, there was these irrecoverable debts which were not uh, deducted yet. So you deduct that and then you take this 4%. But in this case, there's no such thing. So we just take 4% each. Oh, today again, forgot my calculator. So I'm going to use my phone's calculator. Just give me a second. I'm going to pull it up. Okay, it's ready. So 75,000 times 4% will be 3,000. And uh, 77,000 times 4% is going to be 3080. Of course, it went up because uh, our receivables went up. And the percentage is the same. So uh, our provision for doubtful debts went up. When it goes up, it's treated as an expense. Now, what we what do we do in in uh, provision for doubtful debts account? We start with a with with an opening balance, which is always on the credit side. Three thousand balance brought down. Please write it nicely in the exam. Uh, Two thousand twenty-two, Jan first. Okay, dates are simple in this question. That's the opening balance. Now, with provision accounts, you only need to account for the difference, uh, and that goes into your income and uh, income statement or statement of profit and loss. Okay, that's the transfer. Um, so, in this case, what you can do is just put the closing balance. All right, just put the closing balance. As I told you, balance B is always on the, on the credit side. So, what you can do is this is a balance carry it down of uh, 3080 and the difference which is 80 in this case the difference on the shorter side goes to income statement if it is debited in the income statement so if it's credited on on the provision account it will be debited in the income statement debits in the income statement mean an expense it's an expense why because it went up by eighty dollars. Okay, when provision goes up, it's an expense. When does that happen? December thirty-first of the same year. That's also December thirty-first of the same year, two thousand twenty-two, and two thousand twenty-three, Jan one. We have balance brought down. We can also put the totals. That's too easy. Let's move on. State two reasons why Stala maintains a provision for our full debts. Uh, one is to apply matching principle. One is to apply prudence principle, making sure the receivables are not overstated. Okay, so th that's the reason we we, we maintain these accounts. Uh, I'll also show you the mark scheme answer. I'm going to copy it. This is a little bit too detailed, and what I told you is a bit too simplified. So, uh, if you look at the second one, to apply the principle of prudence, and uh, apparently it is accepted, it, if you look at it, to apply the principle of prudence, slash, so you have a choice of writing just that, or you can proceed and say, to ensure that profit is not overstated, to ensure that trade, so these are, you know, th there is an option there. So, there, there are these uh, uh, slashes where you can choose whether to write that first line or the second line i would say write to apply principle of prudence and then go ahead and explain how that happens because you have a couple lines you can say to apply principle of prudence and to ensure the profit and trade receivables are not overstated so that's a good sentence okay and just so you know these are all different points so that's another point you will just get two maximum okay if you look at the first one, it says not all trade receivables will pay the amount they owe to anticipate irrecoverable debts. Yeah, and that's why we need to uh, 
uh, anticipate, as, as it's written, we need to anticipate some irrecoverable debts because not all of it will be paid. It be uh, the, the figures we have for receivables, for example, this 70, we know some of it won't be received, so we need to account for that. To apply principle of matching, which we mentioned, to ensure that sales for which payment will not likely be received are regarded as expense of the year in which those sales are made, not when that actually happens. So if you notice, if we put this, if we account for it now, we are making sure that even if it happens in the future, it's already accounted for, right? And then you just maintain it for the upcoming years. Um, however, as I said, the first lines in this case are enough. They're just asking you to state, you know, normally when they say explain two reasons, then you would have to explain it in detail and that would be four mark for two points, right? For two different bullet points, you have four marks because you'd have to bring it up and explain it, okay? Let's keep moving. Estala charges depreciation at 25% per annum using the reducing balance method. She charges a full year's depreciation in the year of purchase and none in the year it's sold. Okay, 25%. Some important details highlighted. On 31st December 2022, where we are right now, Estala sold the vehicle for 9500 That's the proceeds. The vehicle had a cost of 16000 on 1st September 2020. Uh, be a little bit careful here. It says full year's depreciation in the year of purchase. Sometimes they prorate it as well. So sometimes if it was bought in September, we're going to take depreciation for September, October, November, December, four months. In this case, it's not like that. Uh, for the year ended 31st December, we'll take full year's depreciation. For the year ended 31st December 2021, right? Year ended 31st December. 2021 will take full year's depreciation although we didn't use it for the full year my apologies not 2021 2020 we'll take full year's depreciation even though we bought it in september 2020 okay we'll also take depreciation for 31st december 2021 but none for 31st december 2022 because in that year it was sold so none in the year it was sold okay let's calculate first year's depreciation it's going to be 16,000. very simple times 25%, let's see, it's going to be what, 4,000? 16,000 times 25%, of course, it's uh, 4,000. That's first year's depreciation. Next year is going to be, uh, if you get the netbook value, it's going to be, well, for, for the year ended 31st December 2021, we have, uh, if you do 16,000 minus 4,000, the netbook value is 12,000, and take 25% of that, and I think it's going to be, what, 3,000? We'll confirm can never be too confident with your mental maths times 25 okay that's 3000 and so this is accumulated depreciation uh, at the beginning of the or at the end of uh, 31st December 2021 at the end of 2021 or let's say at the beginning of 2022 this is accumulated depreciation right first Jan 2022 we have that accumulated depreciation accumulated okay no depreciation for this year okay no depreciation for 2022 because that's what it says 7000 is the total depreciation taken so far for for over its, over over its lifetime now <clears throat> that's the what accumulate depreciation what is the net book value the net book value at disposal it's um the cost minus the Accumulated depreciation gives us 9,000. Okay, so that's what our books say. Our books say the worth or the value of this asset is 9,000. We sold it for 9,500, right? Net book value is 9,000. Proceeds are greater than 9,500. Clearly, that's a gain. Okay, that's a gain on disposal very nice okay that's uh like the the main uh, answer let's keep moving the balances on stella's ledger accounts on first january 2022 include the following so the opening balance is basically we have some motor vehicle at the beginning 48,000 and depreciation on those for 21,000. Let's put those amounts 40, 40, uh, okay, 48,000 and 21,000. 
course, this is a balance brought down from the previous year. When is it? Jan 1, 2022. Let's go up. Balance brought down. Jan 1, 2022. Okay. What changes took place during there? There was some disposal, right? So uh, the cost of those disposed vehicles were uh, 16,000. 16,000. Where do we send it? We send it to disposal account. And uh, the date is not specified. We're just going to put the end of the year, December 31st, 2022. And finally, we're just going to balance it. <clears throat> 48,000 minus 16,000. We have 32,000. This is the leftover. 32,000. Balance carried down. Same date. We don't have to write that again. Okay, that's 48K. That's 48K, and that's 32,000. Okay, which date? January 1st. Remember, there's often a, a mark for all the dates, so you can't ignore these. Uh, also, read the question again. It, sometimes it says the balancing is not necessary. You don't have to bring down the balance, so don't waste your time, whatever the question says. Okay, uh, what about the depreciation? Be careful, look, some of it was disposed and you should know that when a disposal is made, all the depreciation taken on a specific uh, asset is removed from the accounts. The cost is removed, in this case 16,000, and the depreciation taken on it, which is 7,000 in this case, so far 7,000, that's removed because it's disposed. But do not forget that you're gonna have to depreciate the remaining assets right the remaining assets if you look at what was disposed and what was the previous amount the remaining assets have an opening uh, provision for depreciation of 14,000 right because 21 minus 7 14,000 and the the remainder of the cost is 32,000 hopefully that makes uh, sense so cost of your uh, vehicles which are unsold is 32 I'm just going from that once again yeah and the accumulated depreciation on them is 14,000 how do I know because the one that's disposed had depreciation of 7,000 accumulated right so this is the remainder like 21,000 was opening balance out of which 7,000 was for the disposed one the remaining 14,000 is for the existing uh, or the remaining motor vehicles be careful if there's any new purchase, then you have to consider that as well. Okay, so cost minus accumulate depreciation, 32, 32 minus 14, it's 18. Take 25%, 18,000 times 25% is 4,500. Okay, that's depreciation for the year. And uh, depreciation is transferred to income statement as an expense, always credited when new depreciation takes place. Income statement. Please write it nicely. You know what I'm talking about. You can hear me. I'm, uh, I'm trying to say income statement there. When does that happen? December 31st. When does that happen? December 31st, 2022. 2022. And finally, we're just going to put the closing balance, balance CDBD. Right, balance carried down, balance brought down when? January 1st, 2023. Okay, 21,000 plus 4,500 minus 7,000, or you can just imagine 14,000 plus 4,500 is 18,500. Oh, sorry, there, 18,500. 18,500. And that's 25,500. Went a little bit with mental maths there. I will uh, confirm my numbers. Okay, I must confirm my numbers first before we move on. All right, everything's looking fine. 
Let's keep moving. Stala had an extension to her retail premises built during 2023. The extension will be used as an office. Place a tick in the correct box to indicate whether each cost is capital expenditure or revenue expenditure. A very common type of question. Looks like we have half a mark for each. Legal fees for obtaining permission to build the extension. Uh, legal fees associated with your non-current asset expenditure will be capital expenditure. Building costs for extension clearly is a capital expenditure. Insurance is kind of a maintenance cost. It's always a revenue expenditure. Uh, painting of office exp uh, paint painting of office extension is uh, part of its construction. So we can say it's not repainting. It's just painting. Uh, office calendar for 2023. Uh, I don't think that can be capitalized. We can't. We can't be sitting uh, and putting that as. A, or, or we can't be really depreciating on that. It's just an expense. You can put it in stationery if you want. It's a bit odd. It's it's quite odd to see that. Purchase of office equipment is a capital expenditure. Installation is also part of capital expenditure, and stationery is also a uh, maintenance. Or let's just say it's, it's, it's clearly a revenue expenditure. We never depreciate uh, stationery. Fine. Um, four marks for that. Sometimes these can get a bit confusing, um, but yeah, just if you practice enough, you will really recognize uh, the items. Uh, we're done with this question, question number two. I'm going to try and upload the rest ASAP. Take care, everybody. Have a nice uh, day or night. Goodbye.